super glad that you are a fan of the show. Uh, whether you like Michelle more or me more, it doesn't matter. You don't have to answer. It's Michelle. <laughs> I win. <laughs> it's always Michelle. It's always Michelle. Everybody likes Michelle more. Do, 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 do. Ha. So what did the bipolar say to the schizophrenic? You're in the right place to find out. Welcome, everyone. My name is Gabe Howard, and I have bipolar. I'm Michelle, and I'm schizophrenic. Let's give our sponsors some love. BetterHelp. Get 10% off your first month by going to betterhelp.com slash BSP22. And today, we have two, not one, two schizophrenics for the price of one. And I can already hear, I can I can hear the entire person-first language movement crushing on me right now, telling me, how dare you? You don't have two schizophrenics. You have two people living with schizophrenia. I can hear it. I can hear it. Like the whole Twitterverse and the internet is mad at me because I called you both schizophrenics. Are you mad at me, Michelle? I mean, for this, not just in general. <laughs> I'm always mad at you. So there's yeah. no difference. Yeah. Are you mad at me for this? For this? For calling you schizophrenic. Yes, I'm furious. Don't you ever call me a schizophrenic. That's terrible. I only believe in person-first language. Always. Now, hang on a second. Are you now saying that the name of your business is Person Living with Schizophrenia.nyc? Yes, I've changed the name. It's a person living with schizophrenia who loves PC language and appreciates everyone in the world. .nyc. Well, now, if you appreciate everybody in the world, don't you appreciate people who don't use person-first language or just not them? I only appreciate dogs who use person-first language. Oh, shit. Well, you know, we have beat this into the ground enough. We have Cody Green here. Cody, Michelle and I, we, we know each other well. We've done person-first language and language arguments. Cody, how do you feel about being called a schizophrenic or a person living with Where do you weigh in on the debate? And, and don't let Michelle and I's opinion sway you. Just give it to us straight. First of all, how dare you, Gabe? How dare you call me a schizophrenic? I can only call myself that. Oh, I feel no, that. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I, I actually go by schizophrenic hippie. I've embraced the name and that's how I refer to myself. So I personally don't get offended, but I know people who do. So you, you believe, I, I think I shouldn't say you believe, we believe, Michelle and I believe that it's all correct, that, it's, that there's not correct or incorrect. We, we really believe more in policing context because you know how many people tell Gabe and Michelle that people living with mental illness shouldn't have jobs like that follows all of the right. But that's so incredibly offensive. Yet schizophrenic.nyc, which follows none of the rules and is incredibly I guess, offensive by the rules is this really empowering movement that Michelle started on the streets of New York City all by herself. The story alone, just this tiny little woman selling this clothing on just, I don't want to say violent streets, aggressive streets in New York City, educating people. But the number one thing that she gets hit with is that the name of her company is offensive. Like, wow, that was your takeaway? That's what I love. Get offended because I'll school you. Get offended because I'll school you. Yeah. You should put that on a shirt. I don't know if that'll sell. You don't know that it won't. You make that shirt, Gabe, and you try to sell it. All right. All right. Good. Fair point. Let, let's get back to Cody. Let's hear from our guest, Cody Green. Cody, who the hell are you? I am a schizophrenic content creator on TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram with over a million followers collectively. I mostly talk about... My experience with schizophrenia, my experience growing up with a mother with schizoaffective disorder, and I do motivational speaking. And you have a million followers on TikTok. Yes. Michelle and I combined have 11. It's pretty impressive. I mean, everyone's got to start somewhere. How do we have 11? Uh, 11. Because How many followers do you have on TikTok, Abe? I have zero and you have 11. So but we don't have 11 combined. Then How many do you have? 3,400. You have 3,400 TikTok followers? I do. That, you're impressed by that? Cody has a million. I have 3,400 and you're impressed. But I have zero. It's all perspective, right? Didn't we just talk yesterday about how you need someone helping your social media because you post on Instagram with no hashtags? 
Yeah. And didn't I just try to hire you yesterday and you said, and I quote, I don't need money. I'm independently wealthy because I own a shirt business. No, I actually (laughs) never said that. That Oh, that's right. You just ignored me. You made that up completely right now. I never said that to you. Number one, I make everything up. So you should not be surprised. Number two, Michelle, now on the air. Do you want to be my social media person? How much are you paying me? (laughs) Look, money is irrelevant. (laughs) You know, I'm going to keep making the joke, Gabe. I like money. I'm a big fan of money. I wish I had more money. It's a terrible joke and I'm sad it's a theme. But you know what? I I just realized something. One guy said, I have a million TikTok followers. And the idiot I work with said I had 3,400. And I was like, hey, I should hire Michelle. You know, hell with that. Hey, Cody, you want to be my social media guru? Oh, I'm in on it. Any day. (laughs) Cody, you have a million TikTok followers. What inspired you to get into this? Well, the cool part of you guys letting me come on the show is that when I was first diagnosed with schizophrenia, my wife actually found your guys' podcast and she started listening to it just as a better way to understand what I was going through. And at the time, my only advocacy that I was doing was in peer support groups. So I was just learning to tell my story and I found your guys' podcast and I know she's going to let this blow up her ego. But Michelle is actually the person who inspired me to start talking about my schizophrenia. Um, And that is how we became friends on social media. She did end up following me on TikTok. You guys actually gave me that opportunity to be like, well, this is something that people are interested in listening that, that I could actually talk about. I didn't have a podcast platform. But once I started growing on TikTok, I was like, well, this is cool. I can do this on here now. Yeah, Gabe, I'm his inspiration. I I signed up on TikTok and I got a message from Cody. Is this the real Michelle Hammer? And I was like, yes. Who are you? I I love how he says, I found you guys' podcast and Michelle's takeaway is it was me. No, but he said it. He just said it, Gabe. You didn't hear it. That's a good point. Cody, you said that you found our podcast and Michelle was your inspiration. Yeah, but I think it's because she matches. What was I? Gabe, hear me out. Hear me out, Gabe. Okay. okay. I think it's because she matches my craziness level. Um, and you're just you're too calm and collected to like match our energy. And so I needed a role model who matched my crazy energy. You know what's fascinating? Michelle knows me in real life, and I am only calm and collected and not crazy when I'm standing next to Michelle. The whole rest of the time, I am the Michelle of the group. I am only not the Michelle of the group when Michelle is in the group. So Michelle would have had a comeback to that, except she was texting, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) That is what she thinks about this show. She thinks that she can text instead of pay attention. It's important. What is more important than our fans and our guest? I I got an order on my website. That, that... Michelle, the whole reason we're doing this podcast is so you can get more orders. But if you ignore the podcast to do the orders, you see how that works. It just doesn't work. Back to Cody. Cody, why not me? That's really (laughs) what I want to know. It's a good question. It's a valid question. Um, I don't know. Like I said, let me break it down. We both have mental illness. We both live in the Midwest. We both have wives. I'm assuming that your wife is on awesome and loves you. My wife is awesome and also loves you because of your million followers. We have so much in common. But Michelle's that type of crazy that I just connect with. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. Crazy together. I just think it's nice that he didn't bite on the low hanging fruit where I said that my wife likes him. (laughs) You know, my wife couldn't find a podcast. There could be like a podcast that would change my life. My wife wouldn't find it. She's not going to go searching for podcasts. Cody's wife is better. Obviously. (sighs) You like my wife and my dog way more. Why don't you just host a podcast with my wife and my dog? Oh, Peppy. He would be good. He could just like pant. Are you trying to be peppy right now? You can't be peppy. Nobody's better at being peppy than peppy. Identity theft is not a joke, Gabe. Yeah, seriously, Gabe. What are you going to do? Like get peppy a social security card, get him a few credit cards, use peppy to to make like fraud and everything like that? The first thing I'm going to do after I get peppy an identity is make this huge order on schizophrenic.nyc and you will be so excited and so happy until the chargebacks hit. That's not cool, Gabe. I don't like a charge yeah, back. Yeah. Somebody yeah. once frauded me. They they paid me with an illegal credit card. I was not pleased. So, Cody, you started a TikTok because of us. Now, I are you regretting that decision? Not the starting the TikTok part, but the part where you are crediting us. The part where I admitted you guys were my inspiration? A little bit, yeah. Now that we're sitting <laughs> yeah. down, yeah, I would say a little bit. Um, 
No, I'm just kidding. Honestly, it's more just because it's really nice to see other people advocating for mental health illness, especially Gabe, if you're from the Midwest, you know, there's not a lot of representation of mental illness besides news and TV shows, which we can all agree are not a great source of information regarding mental illness, especially bipolar and schizophrenia. My mom had schizoaffective disorder, so I did get to see a little bit more of the reality of it, but then it would always tie back to the stigma surrounding it and the TV shows and news articles I would see about it. Did TikTok channels get names? Like, did you get to name it like a schizophrenic and a TikTok? You can see our naming convention. Did, did you get to name it something cool? Yeah. So when I started, I actually just used a goofy name that made no sense. After I started posting about my schizophrenia, I got a hate comment from someone because I have long hair and a beard and I kind of carry myself as more of a hippie type dude. And so someone commented on one of my videos and they're like, well, you're just a schizophrenic hippie. So I took that and that is now my TikTok username, Schizophrenic Hippie. Perfect. So I was like, you know what? That's kind of catchy. And I stole it. So thanks to that guy. Perfect, dude. You know, sometimes a hate comment becomes a positive. Now, is your TikTok, Michelle, called I hate you and you're faking schizophrenia? I think it's just called Schizophrenic NYC. But the, the number one comment that Michelle gets is, I hate you and you're faking schizophrenia. It, it, it's phenomenal how many people accuse her of faking schizophrenia. Now, I know Michelle is about to just like go on a tear. Michelle, calm. Cody, do you get people accusing you on your social media platforms of faking schizophrenia? It's pretty much a daily occurrence because the two most popular types of videos I have are me using my phone to identify whether or not something's a hallucination, and then me using my office webcam to record symptoms that I'm having and then posting them, people assume it's staged because they don't realize that those coping techniques are something that I was learning over the past four or five years on how to better identify my hallucinations. And so when people see it, they automatically assume I'm faking it, trying to get likes and views on my videos. But the technique started as a way to help me, and it became a really good way to show people what it's like living with schizophrenia. So I do get a lot of comments of people assuming that I'm faking, so much so to the point where I had someone constantly accusing me, and they were making a bunch of videos about me. I even posted my medical diagnosis online. I have since taken down that video because I was like, I don't have to prove anything to this guy. And so I've been better at just realizing that no matter how much evidence I put on there, no matter, no matter, even if I put my medical diagnosis online, people will still assume I'm faking it or exaggerating it. So I think that's just part of being a social media person with mental illness. Was it possibly an old dude with a little mustache? Very well could have been. Because I, I got harassed by an old dude with a little mustache that said, I don't have schizophrenia and um, you're just trying to make money off of us. And like I've said a million times, why would I fake schizophrenia? You don't fake schizophrenia for sympathy because everybody, when you say you have schizophrenia, one of their first thoughts is that you're dangerous or you're scary or that you're unstable and they're, they don't want to really associate with you. You want sympathy, say you have cancer. Why would you ever say I'm schizophrenic if you're not? It doesn't make any sense. It's just ridiculous to me. And I started posting those videos, too, of me just talking to myself. And I get comments like, if this is real, this is really sad. And I'm like, I don't need your pity. Yeah. I put it out there to educate people. I didn't put it out there for people to feel bad for me. Well, but it should be sad, right? I just, I know that they mean it mocking. I, I do. I'm not, I'm not defending the trolls. The trolls suck. But when people say things like, well, this sucks and, and this is really depressing and this is sad and this is awful and why'd you do this and on and on and on. It just, it really shows that, yeah, yeah. I mean, this isn't, you're not posting that you just like scored the game winning touchdown or, you know, you didn't like flip your BMX bike or do like a cool trick on a skateboard. This is an illness. You're living with an illness. You're managing an illness and people watch it and they're like, well, that looks shitty. Yeah. I feel like your core message, Cody, is that one, this sucks. And two, but there are things that we can do to make it not suck. Yeah. So the main reason I started posting more regularly and posting not just stories, but also posting actual videos of me having symptoms was so people could better understand it. And people will have different reactions to it, obviously. But one of the 
most common reactions is that looks like it sucks. What can we do better as people who may encounter someone with schizophrenia to help them? And so we get to start a really good dialogue about what can we do as a society to help people struggling with severe mental illness? And that's exactly where that conversation should go. So even if I use comedy as a way of getting people to come to my page, because one of my favorite types of jokes are schizophrenic jokes and people will get really offended and upset about that. But I'm like, my way of coping is comedy. So I do use a lot of comedy when I'm not posting videos of active symptoms. And the reason for that is because it gets people to come to my page who probably never would have went out and looked up what schizophrenia is. So we get to start dialogue with people who maybe never thought they would look into it more. I do laugh at my hallucinations like all the time. I'm having a great time sometimes. Sometimes I'm, I am I am cracking up. I have taken down a video of me laughing with my hallucinations because what I found in that context was people romanticized it. And then they were like, oh, I wish I had schizophrenia. And now I can only really post the ones where you can tell that I'm visibly terrified because anytime I've tried to like post a video of me laughing with my jokes or having a conversation, people will be like, oh, that looks fun. It's like doing drugs without doing drugs. And so I had to like cut back on those types of videos, even though a lot of people will come to me and be like, don't you ever see anything that isn't terrifying or scary? And I would say way more common than when I'm having like frightening hallucinations. But if I post those, people get so weird about it. I didn't want to have to deal with the comments, the people romanticizing it and normalizing, like wanting to have it. And so I had to quit doing that type of content, which really upset me because I think it's just as beneficial to see that it's my everyday life. I talk to people who aren't there. I'll have hallucinations pretty much on a weekly basis, even medicated. Yeah. The fact I can't post that sucks because everyone tries to make it like a cool thing. I remember explaining to my friends in college about hearing different voices and stuff. And like some stuff is really bad. Some stuff is really funny. So they're like, oh, do you want to hear just the funny ones? And I was like, no, I want to hear nothing. I don't care if it's funny. I don't want to hear anything at all. I want to be in reality. Just because I'm laughing doesn't mean I want it to happen. But Cody, should we tell Gabe our brilliant business idea on the internet? Oh, no, don't do it. No. Let me preface this, Gabe. Michelle came onto my podcast a while back and wait, wait, you had Michelle on your podcast. I reached out to you on LinkedIn, but I don't think you knew me at the time. Oh, Gabe, you denied Cody. So shut up. I did not deny. I, you, he said he just said you denied him. So ha ha sucks. Do I use LinkedIn? You asshole. Is LinkedIn a thing that I use? Yeah. You responded to one of my comments the other day. I commented on one of your videos. Oh, what did I say? Thank you. I okay, okay. See, Gabe, you don't even you. You're so bad at social media that you don't even know when you're when somebody you're having on your podcast comments on your social media and has actually reached out to you and you didn't even get back to him and you're thinking that he doesn't. Gabe, you need. A, oh goodness, Gabe, get on your game, Gabe. But Cody, tell the story. Oh yeah, yeah. I want to hear the business <laughs> idea. So I had Michelle on my podcast and we were celebrating Schizophrenia Awareness Day. And Michelle had an idea of a schizophrenic OnlyFans where Michelle makes money um, having her hallucinations create an OnlyFans. Yeah. (laughs) And I couldn't post any of the content about it on TikTok because they have very strict guidelines about talking about OnlyFans. So, yeah, me and somebody nobody else can see just get busy. (laughs) Gabe, what do you think? I I have so many questions. Okay, now a schizophrenic only fan, would you have to be actively hallucinating for like the membership? Like what would the free content be? Michelle getting freaky normal, but the membership content would be Michelle getting freaky while while having a symptom of schizophrenia? Well, okay, we didn't thoroughly think the entire thing through. Yeah, it was more of a premise of a business idea. But we thought it might be a really good idea, you know, like, you know, oh, I'm schizophrenic. Oh, Here's who I'm with tonight. You can't see him, but I. But the people see that him. you are with, do they also have to have schizophrenia? No, just just watch this schizophrenic bang a hallucination. How is this just not porn? <laughs> Michelle, you just invented porn. That's what OnlyFans is. Look, if you want an OnlyFans, just have an OnlyFans. You, you don't need to gussy it up and pretend that it's mental health advocacy. Well, that's what makes my OnlyFans different from other people's OnlyFans. You got to have a shtick. 
But but how are we going to be able to tell that shtick during the OnlyFans? Are you going to like yell, I'm schizophrenic? That feels good. You know what, Gabe? Do you look schizophrenic? Are you saying that schizophrenia has a look? How many subscriptions do you have on OnlyFans, Gabe? How many OnlyFans do you follow? How many people? On OnlyFans? Yeah. None. I follow <laughs> zero OnlyFans people. So then what do you know about OnlyFans that you say that my OnlyFans would be bad? You don't want to see my OnlyFans? I'm offended. You know, that's a good point. I, I think what I'm really responding to is the idea that it's Michelle's only fan. I think if you got an attractive woman with schizophrenia, hey. this could be a really oh, good man. idea, Cody. Oh, really, Gabe? Find me a schizophrenic hotter than me. Right here. Oh, oh, Cody! <laughs> Cody, okay! Yes! Okay! Yes! Okay! I am investing in Cody's only fans. Cody, you gotta have a schizophrenic only fans then. All right. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is not a crisis line, and it's not self-help. Instead, it's professional therapy done securely online. BetterHelp will determine your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist in under 48 hours. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses, plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions, so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room, as with traditional therapy. Visit BetterHelp.com slash BSP22 and get 10% off your first month. Join the over 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P. Go to BetterHelp.com slash BSP22. And we're back. Double the schizos, double the fun. Here we go with Cody Green, the TikTok schizophrenic hippie. She calls herself a schizophrenic, but honestly, any crazy tagline will do. Hey, I'm not crazy. I'm just me. <gasps> Think of the marketing this gives you. Whackjob.nyc, crazedgirl.nyc. Okay, that sounds like porn. That sounds like porn. Whackjob.nyc. Like, no, I don't think that's a good idea. That could be your OnlyFans. I believe this has come full circle. What? Schizophrenicwhackjob.nyc. Now you don't need a partner. So you'll have to think about it for a minute, but as soon as it connects, you'll realize what you just agreed to. Schizophrenic reviews dildos.nyc. <laughs> Why would you review them? Aren't there reviews? I'm sure there's reviews. <laughs> Let's get more serious. You said your mother was schizoaffective. Yep. I'm really curious about what it was like growing up with a schizoaffective mother and how that affected you in any way. Positives, negatives, horribleness, goodness. I don't know what I'm saying. But like, just just how did that like just affect you? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Answer the question. <laughs> um, well, I would say that growing up with a mother who had schizoaffective disorder gave me the opportunity to see how much the view on mental illness has changed even since the early 2000s, especially in a small rural community. People knew my mom was mentally ill. They did not treat her in a very good way. And so I did get to see stigma surrounding mental illness really early on in life. I will say that it also helped me in a way because when my mom was diagnosed, I was able to start doing research about it. I did find out that there was a genetic component to mental illness, specifically schizophrenia. And that gave me the opportunity to prepare with the fact that I might end up developing schizophrenia one day. Even though it took me a while to come to terms when I started having symptoms, it did help me because once I started realizing that I was possibly struggling with schizophrenia, it was very easy to go in and see a psychiatrist, explain my mom's disorder, explain what I was seeing, and get a formal diagnosis. Oh, okay. Okay. So it really didn't have a negative effect on you. I mean, I think it had a negative effect just in the fact that my mom was single mother. She had to go on disability because she couldn't keep going to work specifically because she would have symptoms. She would get sent home. She started struggling with physical symptoms of schizophrenia because she was misdiagnosed with bipolar early on. So she wasn't getting properly treated. And I feel like it just had more negative symptoms in the fact that I was having to watch her go through this and there wasn't anything I could do to help. And as the oldest child of a single mom, it was kind of hard for me to just have to sit back and watch it and figure out what I could do to help. When in reality, as a 15 year old kid, what are you going to do? There was very little I could do to help. And I think that was just kind of debilitating as a kid. 
Now, other, other than your mom, are you the only other family member managing a serious and persistent mental illness? How are your two siblings? My younger brother is about a year and a half younger than me. He's almost getting to that age range where he's kind of out of the typical years someone develops schizophrenia. So he's almost in the clear. He doesn't really suffer from any serious mental illness. He did struggle with addiction just like me. But other than that, he didn't have to go through any mental health diagnosis. My little sister is still definitely under the age range where she could still develop it. So if you have a parent with schizophrenia, you're 18 to 20% more likely to develop it. So statistically, out of three kids, I should be the only one to develop it. Obviously, statistics are going to be skewed, but hopefully that means I'll be the only one who has to receive this diagnosis. I would hate to see for one of my siblings to go through it, but you know anything is possible. Okay, so let me ask you an annoying question that I I get asked all the time. Michelle asking an annoying question? What? I know, I know. I too am people, stunned. Just because people ask me this, people ask me this. So are you going to have kids? I hate when people go, so what do you think about having kids? I hate when people ask me that, but I'm just going to ask you that too, yeah. because I want to hear what you say. As you said, it's a super common question. Me and my wife did decide not to have kids, and my schizophrenia diagnosis did play a role in that. It wasn't the only factor. Um, but it definitely did play a role in it. I remember telling my mom that I was formally diagnosed with schizophrenia and I know it broke her heart because it's the last thing a parent wants for a kid to know that they're going to have to go through the same struggles with mental illness. It was one of the factors in us deciding not to have kids, but it definitely wasn't the only reason. Cody, I'm, I'm not sure the statistics either, I, but it really doesn't matter what the odds are, right? Once it happens, it happens. I made the decision not to have children as well because of bipolar disorder and, you know, because of psychosis and, and, and because of suicidality. It just the two things that kept me up at night were th this idea of passing this along to a child just terrified me. And the, the secondary thing was that that child could very much be Michelle, like, do, do I want to be responsible for a child that's like Michelle? Did that factor what? into you and your wife deciding this idea that you could conceivably make another Michelle and unleash this onto the world? You wish. I will say that I don't think there could ever be a human quite like Michelle ever again. But, you know, it definitely did cross our minds. And it was something we definitely had to consider. Fortunately, my kid won't be raised in New York, so I feel like that helps a little bit with the craziness. Also, Michelle has a very, her words, I, I apologize, Sue, but Michelle has a very overbearing Jewish mother. Again, her words, Sue, please don't send me an email. I've met your mom, lovely woman. Because she can't kick the crap out of you. I mean, I'm six foot. <gasps> Michelle, would you have turned out differently if you were over six feet? Maybe I'd be a model. Why does everything come back to you thinking that you're super attractive and that people want to see you? Women that are over six feet, that's like, you can do cool, cool stuff. <laughs> I'm hot as hell, Gabe, so shut up. You wish you could look like me. Well, as, as opposed to this, I, I'm a giant, fat, red hairball. Yeah, that, that's, listen, looking like you is definitely an upgrade. We should all be trying to look like Cody. I look like a Hasidic Jew every day. You are an Hasidic Jew. <laughs> you said acidic. I said Hasidic, you idiot. You are an Hasidic Jew, Michelle. That's why you, you, do, you don't look like one. You are one. I am not of that sect of Judaism. I just come from them. I have the schnoz. I have the hair. I have the white skin. I may come from the Hasids in the old country. Plus, did you know I found out I'm Ukrainian? There is so much wrong with you. Schizophrenia being just such a small percentage of that. Yes, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So many things. So many things. <laughs> Your therapy bill must be huge. Me? I don't know. Because you don't pay it? <laughs> Who pays your therapy bill, Michelle? Me. People who buy her merch. People who buy my merch. Oh my God. You should design a shirt that says this pays Michelle's therapy bill. Oh. <gasps> you could start a GoFundMe. Send Michelle to therapy. I would buy that shirt, first of all. <laughs> I'd chip in to get you medical care. <laughs> that would be so funny. Make a page. Help me pay my therapy bills. That would be funny. But um, 
Yeah, I wouldn't do that. You know, there was a there was a, a well known advocate that did this. Like any single time she needed anything, she just started a GoFundMe. She's like, "Hey, I'm out of milk. Go fund me." She had so many GoFundMe's. At one point, she had multiple GoFundMe's on her Facebook at the same time for the same thing. Cody, to tie this back to you, sincerely, I know that you deal with a lot of comments, a lot of people, and I'm I'm super glad that you are a fan of the show. Uh, whether you like Michelle more or me more it doesn't matter you don't have to answer it's michelle <laughs> i win <laughs> it's always michelle it's always michelle everybody <laughs> likes michelle more <laughs> do 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 ha 90 percent of this episode is guard this whole episode is going to come out it's gonna be like hi everybody my name is gabe howard and i'm here with michelle and please visit our sponsor better help and we're here with cody hi i'm cody cody you have a website yeah i do uh schizophrenic hippie uh tiktok all right well thanks everybody for tuning in cody was a great guest all right we will see everybody next week on a bipolar a schizophrenic and a podcast a whole episode four minutes <laughs> raw file three and a half hours what are you talking about that's how the editing process works. He's saying he has to cut all of your OnlyFans talk out of this episode, which was 70% oh. of it. I might leave that in, actually. I think the OnlyFans stuff is definitely going to stay. Oh, well, that's good, because that was a main portion of it, I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to launch my OnlyFans when it airs so everyone can go to it. We could call it a bipolar, a schizophrenic, and an OnlyFans. No, I think we should call it a bipolar, a schizophrenic, a schizophrenic, and a hallucination OnlyFans. All right, and Cody is the second schizophrenic. Yes. Now, has Cody agreed to this? His wife just, just messaged me and said, do it. His, his wife messaged you? No, she did What's didn't. his wife's name, Michelle? Allison. Is it really Allison? It is. Yeah, I see some of his videos. Uh, I know it's Allison. Well, congratulations. You knew. What's my wife's name? Kendall. Oh, that's really impressive. <laughs> What's my ex-wife's name? Lisa. What's my other ex-wife's name? You never told me. That's not true. I completely told you. You never told me. Starts with an M. Melissa. No. Mary. No. Michelle. No. no. That's my fourth wife. That's where this is headed. This is the only place that this could end. The whole world is going to explode and Michelle and I are going to be the only two left. It's going to be no. me, Michelle, and Keith Richards. Keith Richards? Yeah, to survive the apocalypse. I'm going to have to make babies with Keith Richards? <laughs> That's cruel, Michelle. You have a vasectomy. <laughs> you, you know way too much about me. Cody, we do have to get out of here very soon. I know you want to get back to your life. And is there any additional information that you want to share with our audience before we share all of your website, socials, and all the information on how to contact you? Yeah, I just always like to, and anytime I'm on a podcast or on a show, I always just like to say, Get into advocacy however you can, whether it be TikTok, whether it be on Instagram. I never thought I would have a platform for advocacy, and now I have 1.2 million followers, not 1 million, actually. Um, wait, wait. In the time that we have been on this show, it went up 200,000 people. That is the <laughs> advocacy power of a bipolar, a schizophrenic, and a podcast. Just by Cody being on this show, 200,000 followers. Woo! We'll say that it wasn't 1.2 the whole time, just to help you guys out a little bit. But seriously, my recommendation is always, if you have a story, get into advocacy because you never know how far it'll go and how far it'll reach and who it'll help. So if you guys want to contact me, I have several social media platforms and thank you guys personally for letting me come join you and harass Gabe for a while. I do appreciate it. Cody, thank you so very much. I, I really like what you said. Michelle and I get a lot of emails too. And they're like, look, I can't afford a podcast. I don't have a million social followers. I, I can't do what you do. And maybe I don't want to be as public, but is it worth doing something on a small level? And unequivocally, yes. Could you imagine if every single person living with a serious and persistent mental illness put out one piece of content a year? One piece of content, one blog, one TikTok video, one YouTube video, one Facebook message, just literally one a year, it would be millions upon millions of pieces of content and it would really educate people and let people know they're not alone. So yeah, never ever underestimate how important one thing is and you may catch the bug. I think all of us started with one video and or one something. I wrote one blog and I was like, that's it. I'm going to write one blog. And here we are. Michelle said the same thing. She started with like, she's going to like, I'm going to make one shirt. Now she's on what her, her 50th piece of, uh, I don't know, merch. I don't know. I don't know how many merch I've sold. 
So many, she can't even count that high. Cody, this is my, my final question. Sincerely, when you started the TikTok channel, did you believe that it would get to 1.2 million? What were your expectations on day one? My expectations were for it to be a personal web journal. I was just going to talk basically to myself because, you know, apparently I don't do that enough as a schizophrenic person. <laughs> I decided to do it on TikTok. <laughs> and I told one story that I called schizophrenic story time. And my very first video had over 100,000 views overnight. It was my first viral video. I woke up with 10,000 followers, and that was just apparently the beginning. So I could have never imagined. That's awesome. Cody, that is very, very awesome. Do you have a website? Where do folks find you? Tell everybody all of the details to look you up. Absolutely. So you can always check out CodyGreen.com, Cody with a K. Otherwise, you can find me on YouTube. TikTok or Instagram under the username Schizophrenic Hippie. Otherwise, you can just check out any of my other social media. I'm on Facebook and LinkedIn as well. Well, thank you so much. And listen up, everybody. You have been listening to a bipolar, a schizophrenic, and a podcast. Wherever you downloaded this episode, please subscribe or follow. It's 100% free. And do us a favor and tell someone about the show. Word of mouth, social media, text messaging, whatever it takes, we would consider it a personal favor if you would share the show. Look, if you're interested in my book, Mental Illness is an Asshole and Other Observations, just go to GabeHoward.com and grab a signed copy and hey, I'll throw in free swag. If you're interested in the first clothing line started by a schizophrenic chick, go to my online store at schizophrenic.nyc. And Michelle and I both travel nationally as speakers. You can find out more on our respective websites. And hey, you want to save 10% on your first month of online therapy? Check out our sponsor by going to betterhelp.com slash BSP22. We'll see you next Tuesday. Cody Bean, the schizophrenic hippie. You've been listening to a bipolar, a schizophrenic, and a podcast. Season 2. Previous episodes can be found on your favorite podcast player or by visiting thisemotionallife.org slash BSP. Have comments or show ideas? Hit up the show at BSP at thisemotionallife.org. Gabe and Michelle are not medical professionals. This podcast is not a substitute for medical advice and is for entertainment purposes only. If you need help please call your doctor, emergency services, the National Suicide Hotline at 1-800-273-8255 or text HOME, H-O-M-E, to 741-741. Thank you for listening. Cody Green! Cody Green! Cody Green! Cody Green, the schizophrenic hippie! Schizophrenic hippie! Schizophrenic hippie! Schizophrenic hippie! Gabe just make me yell these. I yell like a million times. He makes me do this all the time. I do, I do. Schizophrenic hippie! Cody Green, the schizophrenic hippie! Schizophrenic hippie! Hippie! Woo!